When the Midland Railway was planning its main line to London in the early 1860s, the space underneath its London terminus, St Pancras, was reserved for the storage of beer from Burton-upon-Trent. The spaces between the columns matched the arrangement found in the warehouses of Burton, the distance of 14 feet between them being the size of multiple beer barrels. Commonly, it is thought that the beer stored below the station was brewed by Bass, Radcliffe and Gretton. Well, it wasn't. When the Midland was planning its main line to London, Bass agreed with the railway to send all beer via it as far as was possible. The cost of carriage was fixed and the railway would provide in London, quote, ale stores and offices sufficient for the business. This accommodation was, however, not under the station. Bass rented a warehouse off the railway company on the Regent's Canal, connected to St Pancras's northern goods yard. This warehouse held 120,000 barrels of beer and employed 120 people. The first beer to be housed there also did not arrive by rail. Because the main line was incomplete, in March 1865, the first beer arrived by canal. So which breweries did use St Pancras's Undercroft? In 1882, the Burton Brewery Company and Ind Coupon Co were in occupation, as was Thomas Sultan Co, which had the largest operation there. They were later joined by Joshua Tetley and Son of Leeds, and later Marston, Thompson and Son also of Burton. But these brewers were not alone under St Pancras, and Allied Trades also did business there, including beer bottlers and a brewer's agent. In later years, the businesses occupying the cellars diversified in type. In the 1920s and 30s, tenancies were taken up by Adams & Son, a wine and spirits wholesaler, United Glass Bottle Manufacturers, and F.J. Edwards, who made machinery and tools. So next time someone tells you Bass occupies St Pancras's Undercroft, perhaps just correct them. If you would like to know more about the relationship between Britain's railways and the brewing industry, I will be doing a live Q&A with Gareth Dennis on his Rail Data Show on the 15th of April at 7pm. So tune in.